Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, first of all, I have to say I've been busy the last three days. I start off with the um, <clears throat> excuse me, with the um, with the PSL uh, protest on Friday. Then there was uh, I was supposed to do a the 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 anti gun violence uh, that I was supposed to do that, but. Uh, it got postponed, I think, uh, until this week or something to that effect. Um, but I did that, and there's an I feel an impromptu protest downtown. I just happened to be in the area because of the previous one I just mentioned. So I wound up doing uh, part one and part two of a of a pro pro abortion um, protest. And then yesterday, the DNC or the Ohio Democrats did one on Facebook, um, and because the Dems and uh, the uh, Nurses March uh, tend to use copyrighted material like songs, like, you know, uh, Pink's uh, The Pill, or is it The Pill? Uh, just Like a Pill, excuse me. And um, <sighs> Facebook, pain in the butt. Um, I had to. I'm going to have to ask, start asking just to be sure if I can uh, do uh, do those, uh, say on YouTube or something to that effect. But anyway, uh, the DN, the Democrats did the same thing yesterday. They played like five or six songs before they started speeches. Um, Facebook uh, blocked the so-called ad and muted it. Uh, problem with that is, uh, usually I'm able to download uh, the protest I I do on Real Progressives on Facebook. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, check out uh, realprogressives.org uh, while you're at it. Uh, and also, while you're at it, uh, check out The Deficit Myth by Stephanie Kelton. Um, and also, uh, check out uh, the seven innocent, uh, seven deadly innocent uh, government frauds by Warren Mosler. Uh, all of his all of his books are on his website, uh, uh, Mosler Economic. Uh, sorry, uh, MoslerEconomics.com um, is under a must read, and there's like seven books, I think. Uh, anyway, and also uh, check check out uh, Bill Mitchell on uh, Twitter um, and. L. Randall Ray at uh, Leaving Institute and stuff, you know, people like that. Uh, Mike Norman, I believe it's pitbulleconomics.com. Uh, um, anyway, <laughs> just, <laughs> the point being is uh, I've been doing a lot more uh, protest as, as I wanted to uh, when we first moved here to Ohio. The first thing I wanted, I, one of the things I wanted to do was get away from interviewing, which was great. But I was only interviewing Green Party members. And I think I interviewed one communist uh, that was running in, I think, Vermont. Um, but I have since uh, got away from mostly interviews and have gotten more into doing protests, as you see out here. I think this was kind of doing a little preview here. Um, I think this was Friday. People, PSL. pleasure is a birthright. is a birthright and that is true regardless of our income or marital status neither of which determines our worthiness of pleasure any more than our readiness for parenthood <laughs> married and partnered people okay let's see let's go back to this how you do it there we go and other ones i've done um and see this one let's see let's go here yeah this one i'll, I'll be putting up hopefully later on, i'll be doing another zoom with this one because uh as you can see i cannot download i can save and other things like that but that's pretty much it this is the reason why i cannot i think but anyway uh my point of the matter is uh i've been busy doing a lot of these things and this one was very big as far as uh as far as um attendance. Let me see if I can do it. <laughs>
Fast forward this if I can. Sherrod Brown was there. Um, so the, oh, man, not Paul Ryan, but uh, Jim Ryan, I think his name is. Uh, the one that got shut down by Bernie Sanders during the presidential election or presidential um, uh, debate. Um, he actually showed some uh, personality here. But anyway, my point being is, uh, if you want more of this kind of stuff, uh subscribe to my channel on here uh also let me go back to that if i can there we go and also um support and subscribe to realprogressive.org uh donate volunteer whatever the case may be uh we may be getting we may be getting into a position where we're able to do uh um chapters but we're not there yet um but anyway my point being here is i've been busy as far as the park goes so um i'm glad to see so much activity but at the same time i keep hearing democrats now saying that uh they want to codify they've had since carter to to codify this they have ran uh countless campaigns midterm primaries generals about maintaining roe v wade uh making sure that uh the supreme court doesn't overturn that well they didn't fight against mitch mcconnell uh during obama's last term because obama's like fuck it i don't care i'm not running again at least that's what the sense i got um, so McConnell stopped from having like one, uh, one choice and next thing I know about, I think two judges got, uh, one per, one judge actually passed away, uh, and another two were asked to step down. I think I'm not sure about that, but I think, um, and so Trump was able to, uh, uh to nominate, fuck what, four, five, no, four. For, I think th between three and four um, judges and both parties uh, decided to vote them in and this is the kind of crap you get. So for those, I mean, I re I re register myself as a Democrat here in Ohio, just so I can have the option. Doesn't mean I'm actually going to exercise that option, but I have the option. Um, and yeah, do I have faith in Democrats? Hell no. Do I have, do I know about do I know the Republicans are going to fuck things up? Hell yes. Do I think that we need a third party? Hell yes. Do we do I think we need a brain choice voting? Again, hell yes. Do I think that we need um well, brain choice ballot uh paper ballot? Uh hell yes. Uh open primaries, hell yes. Uh do we have the the people to do it? Apparently not, <laughs> because I haven't seen any part of that on the uh, as a ballot initiative yet. If there, if it, if it's on this one coming up, I will definitely be voting for it. Um, and uh, there's many Democrats running for different offices. I will be looking each and every one of them up. I will be carefully uh, voting. I'm not going to just willingly vote for any for any blue. I'm not trying to do that kind of shit. Uh, when they say blow, uh, vote blue no matter who, I choose the blue I vote for, not you, is, is my stance on that. But anyway, it's all horse shit. It shouldn't have happened in the first place. But then again, the deficit going down, that's not a good thing either. I've heard uh, a lot of tech companies are laying people off, Tesla being one of them. Let me see if I can find that, actually. Let's see. Uh, nope. Is it maybe? Uh, did, uh, yeah, here it goes. I think it is. Let's see. Uh, Peloton has already laid off thousands of employees. Let me go. Let me go back, back to the beginning of this. 
A wave of layoffs is sweeping the U.S. Here are firms that have announced cuts so far from uh, Compass to Coinbase. So this is the 14th, which is obviously about a week or so ago. Uh, a wave of layoffs has swept across American businesses for the first time, uh, first first half of 2022. Excuse me. The cuts stem from slow business growth paired with rising labor costs. Actually, no, it's not labor. It has nothing to do with labor costs. Uh, in fact, uh, the labor cost has, hasn't grown uh, fast enough for another word uh, for for consumers to be able to maintain their own life. Uh, the layoffs span across industries from mortgage lending to digital payments processing. Uh, layoffs are sweeping across American business in the first half of 2022. Uh, Peloton has already laid off thousands of employees this year. Online car dealer uh, Carvana slashed 12% of its workforce. Even traditionally layoff uh, resistant companies like Netflix are making cuts and now real estate brokerages are cutting hundreds of jobs. Interesting. Um, because the real estate uh, business has been booming as far as BlackRock and uh, uh, Blackstone and those other places as well as smaller, uh, I, guess, I guess you can say affiliated companies. Um, you know, especially uh, in Ohio that buy um, houses off the market as well. Um, anyway, so let's see. The reason broadly is twofold. Business growth is slowing while labor costs are increasing. No, it's not. Not in my, not in my opinion, anyway. It's, uh, labor costs are not, ex are not expanding fast enough as far as labor themselves. Um the combination is causing American companies across a variety of industries to slash uh, headcount. Here are, okay, so let's see, uh, Compass, uh, 450 employees. Let's see, real estate brokerage Compass will lay off about 10% of its workforce or 450 employees. The company announced a reg in a regulatory filing. The cuts are part of a series of new cost cutting measures that include pausing expansion, consolidating offices, and halting merger and acquisitions. Let's see, Red, uh, Redfin, about 6% of total employees. And I'm going to be kind of guessing that the CEOs and other executives of uh, these companies that are laying people out for getting fatty um, uh, paychecks from that because, well, they don't have to pay anybody as far as I know of. Um, Real estate brokerage Redfin is also uh, conducting layoffs, a sign that the hot pandemic era, pandemic era housing market is starting to cool off due to rising interest rates. Actually, the, the fact that they've been buying houses or real estate, real, big real estate companies have been buying houses uh, above market value are actually increasing uh, market value of shares as far as uh, as as far as housing cost it's not the fact that there there are there aren't enough uh housing um being built as far as i know of uh i mean there have been uh rezoning and stuff of that nature but there has been enough of a of a built of a building block if you will uh of that happening um CEO Glenn Kelman wrote in a blog, a blog post that about 6% of the company's total workforce will be laid off, which equates to uh, 470 employees, according to a regulatory filing. Uh, as you can see in quotes, I said we, we wouldn't be laying off, we wouldn't be laying off people unless we had to. We have to, Kelman said. Mortgage rates increase faster than any, at any point in history, we could be facing years, now months, of fewer home sales. The Redfin still plans to thrive. Okay, Coinbase, about 80% of the workforce. Crypto exchange platform Coinbase announced it would reduce its staff by 80% to ensure we stay healthy during the economic downturn. What do you expect? Your industry, the, your industry has been going up and up and down faster than anything else I've seen. And that's pretty much the the whole thing as far as that part goes. 
Let's see. Lay off, the layoffs uh, come uh, amid a crypto crash that resulted in traders losing roughly two trillion since November. So, as I just said, uh, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong um, wrote in a uh, blog post that layoffs are a result of companies growing too fast, changing economic conditions, and the need to keep costs low during a downturn. <laughs> Tesla hiring freeze. And potential layoffs report, reportedly coming to 10% of staff. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, coming to. So Tesla has yet to conduct any mass layoffs. An email reported from uh, Elon Musk to his executive staff spelled out his intention to cut 10% of his workforce, approximately 10,000 people. Reuters obtained an email reportedly from Musk titled, Pause All Hiring Worldwide. Uh, worldwide. In the email, Musk said he has a super bad feeling about the economy and is attempting to get ahead of potential problems by enacting these two measures, according to Reuters. Tesla has yet to confirm the report. Musk later seemed to retract some of what he said in an email tweeting that total headcount of the company would increase. Uh, Carvana, about 2,500 people. Carvana plans to cut 12% of his staff, or about 2,500 employees. The only car dealer announced in uh, sorry, online, excuse me, not only, but online car dealer announced. And finally, with the Secretary, uh, Secretary, excuse me, uh, Security and Exchange Commission. In an email to employees viewed by Wall Street Journal, CEO Ernest Garcia III said that the company has overestimated growth amid a challenging time in the auto industry. By cutting staff, Carvana aims to find a better balance between its sales volumes and staffing levels, the company said in its sec filing. So what it sounds like is because of lack of different materials, like I think the, the semiconductors and other things, um, business is slow now. And I, from what I hear, that's partially due to the same industry that does the Bitcoin type thing because they, they, burn, they burn up a lot of energy, which requires a lot of semiconductors. Both father and son saw that fortunes skyrocketed during the pandemic, no kidding, as demand for used cars uh, hit new highs. Carvana said in his set filing, their executives will forego their salaries for the rest of 2022 to help cover employees' severance pay. In other words, they're going to be doing mass stock sales in order to be able to get back what they lose in that regard, as I suspect. A brief about 750 uh, people. Uh, I'm not really sure what they do. Um, anyway, so let's see. Go, oh, okay, so Ghost Kitchens Company, Brief Technology, will cut 5% of his, of his global workforce. The SoftBank-backed uh, startup is laying off about 750 employees as it works towards profitability in a challenging uh, economic environment. You see, what people, don't, what people are not realizing is something like an MMT type of job guarantee if that were in place, these people who are being laid off currently would have somewhere to freaking go. And we would have like jobs, not galore, I can't say that, but what I will say is that at least would it would have jobs to feed their families, jobs to pay their bills and stuff like that, instead of having to go back onto what is the pretty much the, um, the, um, the, the, the stabilizer of unemployment. Um, so, if you look at the economy through the MMT standpoint, you see a possible um, solution for all this. You, I mean, just look at the, what MMT is offering as far as um, a way of looking at the economy, looking at government spending and stuff of that nature. I mean, job guarantee would bring, I think, forward the Green New Deal, which would create thousands, if not millions of jobs that are in renewable energies that would help uh, go against climate change that would get us away from fossil fuels. Those same people who are in fossil fuels would, be, would go through a just transition and get into the renewable energy industry. That means EVs, that means, you know, solar, that means 
uh, wind power, stuff like that. Those things would, would pay them the same, I would suspect, because uh, the job program is supposed to be competitive with the with the market, the, the labor market, meaning that depending on the kind of skills you obtain through the job program, uh, you would maybe be uh, your your labor your skills would would be worth more in the uh, labor market, uh, forcing the same industries you worked for to justify paying you the same amount because your job skills may have increased to benefit their to benefit their job their company. So this is the reason why we have, we must look at the economy as MMTers because MMTers, even though there are a lot of critics out there, those critics can literally, they cannot fight against MMT and what MMTers say because it makes too much sense because it creates too many solutions for the problems they create for the riches that they take and don't really give anybody else in regards to, you know, the industries, the jobs, or whatever the case may be. Anyway, so all of this, all these things can be uh, solved uh, with a job guarantee, creating uh, higher wages, uh, creating, you know, MMT can help create the Medicare for All, the Green New Deal, the job guarantee. All those things can be done if you know what a sovereign currency country is and spending uh, what basically the economy can soak in as far as natural resources, the uh, labor, the materials, stuff like that. And one of the things that is happening or um, is keeping us from this is the sanctions on the the in, in the countries that we mostly buy from the Chinas, the the Canadas, the Mexicos, the you know those those countries that sell that, that we trade with. The more they pay, the more we pay. You get it. Um, so that's one of the things that is, is hurting this. The fact that we don't have uh, more than 59% of manufacturing here in the United States when we used to have up to 90% manufacturing. Uh, that all changed as far as I'm concerned. When Bill Clinton uh, signed the bill to repeal Glass-Steagall, that allowed a lot of the industries either to move out of the country uh, and higher out higher lower wages or lower wage people but still sell to the same customer base so they were able to make it cheaper sell it back to us for for the same price if not higher uh let's see and if we manufacture stuff here more and more and more we can manufacture our own solar panels we can manufacture our own wind, uh, uh, our own wind carbines, or uh, the I don't know if that's the right term for it, but anyway, point being is if we moved manufacturing back here to for Green New Deal type type projects, we would be good. We would be golden as far as the park goes, and our supply chain would not be as disrupted. Anyway, let's see. Anyway, so yeah, later on, I will be. You need to put this on another Zoom call and put this on my other channel. This, yeah, this is it right here. So subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to uh, Root Progressive in Action on YouTube also .org. Um, well, rootprogressive.org. Um, yeah. MMT literally is the only, 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 only way to see the, the economy and macro and micro uh, way. Anyway, that's all I got to say for the moment. This is, by the way, what I'm talking about. Let's see, federal taxes don't fund spending. That means our nation is self-funding. This federal government can't go broke, and which means we can address the 
poverty and hunger and homelessness, climate and energy in, uh, issues, universal health care, free college and trade schools, uh, federal t uh, job guarantees, what I was just talking about, which I would assume this would kind of go together in that regard, paid family and medical leave, and student debt relief. So there you go. Anyway, so thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to this channel. Please subscribe to realprogressives.org. Please subscribe to its uh, YouTube channel as well and uh, in my Ohio protest channel as well. For now, peace out for now.